Every developer has a hard choice to make. Do you code on a laptop and trade portability for power? Or code on a desktop? All the power that you're constrained coding in one place. A lot of developers actually start with a laptop, then move to a desktop as the need for raw power increases. But where do you start building your first desktop PC? On today's show, I'm joined by Kayla, a program manager for the Windows Terminal team, who decided that not only would it be fun to finally build her first PC, but it'd be even more fun to build it live during Microsoft's premier developer conference, Build. Learn about the components she used to put together not only a powerful developer PC, but an electronic work of art. From the choice of components for speed to selecting the case and lighting, Kayla has created a machine that not only drastically reduces her compilation times, making it 10 times faster, but is also a beautiful addition to any home or office. And the best part is you too can build your own PC that looks and runs this sweet. Let's get personal computing with Kayla Cinnamon. Hey, Kenna, great to finally meet you in person. Yeah, you Welcome too. to the Microsoft Reactor in Redmond. Thanks, it's my first time here. Brilliant, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you came, came and joined us here. <laughs> and I'm glad you brought Ada with you. I did. I've seen so much about this. This is <laughs> the beast in question. Yeah. How, how is it? How have you been finding your fantastic new computer? Uh, I've been loving it. Haven't had it for too long. Uh, I've been using it almost every day, though, so that's been kind of fun. Nice. So uh, just how powerful is it? I mean, if we spin up like Task Manager, for example, just how much of a beast have you built here? So it has an i7 uh, CPU in it, so that's that's pretty powerful. And then it also is using a 2070 GPU. So again, a little bit more powerful there, too. Pretty meaty stuff. OK, well, if we actually flip the screen, just for yeah. Task Manager, and let's actually look at the specs of this thing. I'm, I'm really intrigued. So where are we? On the performance tab, I think it is. We can oh, look at that. So 12th generation Intel Core i7, 12700. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit out of date with my PC building. <laughs> uh, the last time I built a PC, I think I put you know, megabytes of, uh, of RAM in the oh, thing. So yes. you know, it's okay. a little bit out of date. But this seems, seems pretty powerful. I mean, we're looking at, what's that, 3.61 gigahertz? So this is quite a powerful chip inside this, isn't it? Uh, I, yes, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of these kind of multiple core chips that we get these days. So how many cores has this thing got? I didn't look that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just 12. That. It has 12. 12. Check that out. Yeah. Check that out. 12 yeah. cores, 20 logical processors. This is quite a powerful machine for, for building, building code. Mm -hmm. And obviously, RAM is a big thing these days. Right. Um, yeah. You, you may have noticed earlier we had this lovely PC next to you with 16 megabytes of RAM. Is yeah. there a little bit more than 16? Just a little. So this has 32 gigabytes of RAM. So literally 2,000 times the RAM <laughs> of yeah. this old box that we got next to you. Yeah. So that, that's quite a powerful machine. And you say GPU in there is uh, 2070. So this is yeah. uh, kind of great for machine learning, graphics workloads. Yeah, exactly. Or you know, playing games or anything like that. Anything that requires a heavy GPU 2070 will be just fine. So you say it's got a NVIDIA GeForce 2070 yes. in there. There's a global chip shortage. So how did you get one? <laughs> so uh, one of my friends was able to get a 3080. Don't know how. Um, and he retired his 2070 and didn't know what to do with it. I just built this PC without a graphics card because the motherboard has integrated graphics. Right. So then he gave me the 2070, and that's how I got it. But I have heard that the shortage is lightening up a little bit. It's a little bit easier to get cards these days, but I'm, I'm not totally sure. Yeah, I did see somewhere a scalper was complaining that he lost $23,000. I saw that too. <laughs> like, yep, heart bleeds for you, you know. <laughs> This is really cool. So let's have a quick demo of just how powerful um, this is. Yeah, totally. So I have built uh, Windows Terminal here. So I'm the program manager for Windows Terminal. So Windows Terminal is your jam. This is your That's thing. That's my thing. Yeah. No, inside and out. Um, and we are open source on GitHub. So I cloned the repo from GitHub, and mm -hmm. then I built it using Visual Studio. And here is the build, the dev build running here. And on my machine I was using before, it took about 20 to 30 minutes to build Terminal. This took about wow. two to three minutes when I when I ran the build earlier. So 10 times speed up. Yeah, which is so great. Because I, I do a lot of UI programming. My background is in user interface design. Yeah. So when I'm just trying to update just what the front end looks like, 
it takes a long time just to change like a, a pixel in a margin or something, like something mm -hmm. very small. So the long build time was kind of uh, bogging down my development, <laughs> uh, I would say. So this is a lot faster. So just in terms of you're in a developer loop, this idea of I, you know, I debug something, I change something, I build mm -hmm. it, I test it, I change it, I build it, I test it. Right. You've got this kind of ten, almost like 10 times speed up right. in terms of what you're doing. And I mean, this is phenomenal. So I, I remember going back many, many years ago, C++ programmer, mm -hmm. certain files, you change those, and the build could take like an hour and a half. Right. Which is great if you get ch file changes before lunch. <laughs> Not so great if changes after lunch. Yeah. So can we actually have a little more of a, a dig around inside? Yes. You know, talk me through the build. Yeah. Totally. So the first thing that you start with is the motherboard, which is this. It's actually lit up here, but it's the white in the back of the case. Oh, the nice, nice glow thing. Motherboards with lights. Yeah. I love lights. That's so cool. Yeah. So I think the integrated graphics are living under here, but I'm not entirely sure. I didn't see them anywhere else, so I assume they're under there. Um, and then you're going to want to install your storage, which is actually under this silver uh, piece right there. I have one terabyte of storage. And it's then under there, yeah. So, so there's a heat sink on the back of that silver piece to make sure that the storage doesn't get too hot, and wow. then so, the, so it's hiding. The old PC I've just I tucked over behind you that's got like 40 megabytes of hard disk space, something dark like that, <laughs> and the whole thing's like this big, <laughs> and this is a terabyte. Yeah, in there. it's like this big. Wow. Um, and then once that's all set up and your motherboard's ready, you install the motherboard into the case, and then you can add on your CPU coolers. This is a liquid CPU cooler that's mounted to the CPU. Oh, you also put the CPU in. This is an i7 12 core CPU yep. that you put in the motherboard first. And this is liquid cooled. This is liquid cooled. So it helps for a little bit more efficient cooling rather than just a standard CPU fan. Isn't that dangerous? I mean, electronics and liquid <laughs> always feel, always, always scares me a bit. Yeah, they don't really mix well. Um, <laughs> but actually, nowadays, the liquid coolers come pre-packaged with the liquid inside. So I didn't have to fill this, because I think you used to have to fill mm. these tubes with the liquid for cooling. This came all like pre-sealed, and it's all one unit. So nice. I didn't have to do that. So luckily, or hopefully, if nothing breaks, it should be OK. But it is a little spooky having liquid running through your machine. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so that's the cooler sits on top of the CPU. Yes. And the CPU is always running at 3.6 gigahertz. It's running fast. It's generating a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. So it kind of needs this cooling. Yeah. And um, that's kind of hidden away. It just looks like some kind of weird camera thing. It almost, almost matches like going red and you know, uh, acting like HAL 9000 from uh, 2001. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's really cool. And then so that, that's, the, that's the brains behind it. Right. And then the glowing strips? Those are the RAM sticks. So each stick is 16 gigs, adding up to 32 total. So the, the, the RAM has literally got glowing lights yeah. on the RAM. Whatever I could get lighting up, I did. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so, I'm, I'm a huge fan of lights. I've got LED lights all around, Me too. All around, all around my house. And uh, behind my desk, I've got light up shelves and light up Lego. So I'm a huge fan of lights. So I'm loving the fact we've got this lighting going on here. Yeah. OK. And then so, that, so you've got CPU, you've got the, the RAM, mm -hmm. and then at the back here, so here is the, the, the motherboard. GPU, GPU, and then there. the whole thing it's mounted onto is the motherboard. And this is the motherboard as well that's lit up. OK, so even parts of the motherboard. Right. Oh, that's changing colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. OK, and then these fans here are for the That's the liquid, the liquid CPU cooler. cooler. And again, I'm not sure if you can see there, but if I put my hand in there, we kind of also lit up, also lit up yep. in different colors. <laughs> nice. And then I've got this lovely breeze. Where I'm sitting, I've got this nice breeze coming towards me. <laughs> that's these fans here to, to help cool it. Right, so we have three fans on the front for intake, mm -hmm. and also um, three fans on the top and the back for exhaust. So when you're bringing air into the computer, you want your intake fans on the bottom and the front, right. and then your exhaust on the top and the back, because heat rises and needs to flow through the machine itself. Ah, uh, so rather than blowing the heat from here down, kind of pushing against that natural heat rising, right. you're sucking the heat up and yeah. out the top. So kind of coming out here and here, yeah. we're feeling that that airflow, so it right. comes in the front, brings it through, exactly. comes out the back. So you're on the breezy side. I am. It's a little, yeah. it's a little bit chilly <laughs> over here, actually. <laughs> you're sitting there in the hoodie, and I'm kind I of know. We should switch water. sides. We should. <laughs> no, this is, this is a very, very powerful machine. And then, mm -hmm. because you built it yourself, yeah. it's obviously upgradable. You could say, you know what, I want to change. You know, your, your friend gets rid of his uh, upgraded graphics card, flop it out, yeah. <laughs> and away you go. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is it, it's beautiful, but I'm noticing the cables are a little bit uh, Higgledy piggledy. I know. You're not a seasoned PC builder, are you? No, I have no idea how to do cable management, um, <laughs> to be completely honest. I tried my best. There's a bunch of wires and things running along the back, yeah. um, or I guess the side. But when things have to plug into the front of the motherboard here, I am not sure how to 
tuck it away or, you know, tie it up or anything. And we built this during build. So mm -hmm. I, timing was a little difficult to get in there and get things tidied up before the next filming happened of whatever I need to film doing with the machine. Yeah. Yeah. So you say you built this during build. During build, you're saying this is your first ever PC built. Yes, sort of. Sort of. Oh, sort of. I know. Is there a story? There is a story. So there's okay. a little bit of a background knowledge to this machine. So I am a completely newbie PC builder. I never built one before the build event, except yeah. for the backup that I made of this machine. The backup, the proper planning, <laughs> the proper planning. Poor performance one. Right. Right. Because we don't want a story of that she's a newbie builder and then we take you through the day and then it doesn't turn on at the end. <laughs> like that would just be really sad to watch. So I'd had one experience of building this exact machine once, two weeks before build, made sure it worked, put Windows 11 on it, made sure the demo worked and had something in case on day two, if we turned it on and it didn't work, we had a machine that did work that looked exactly the same. So this is my second ever PC. Second ever PC built. Yeah. OK, um, why? What, what inspired you? Obviously, we, yeah, we've seen that it's a powerful machine. Yeah. What, what inspired you to build? I mean, it's, it's beautiful. You know, it, the PC is beautiful. Your keyboard, your mouse, <laughs> it's, it's stunning. So just from a, just a sheer aesthetics, it's incredible. But did you just fancy something that looked cool? Or was there an inspiration behind it? Yeah, so I first started with the keyboard and the mouse because I have a tablet for work and I plug that into my monitor and then yeah. I need a keyboard and mouse. And we've been working from home, so I wanted a nice setup. So then that's where I got these. And then I learned about keyboard switches and all of those things, which I'm really into. And deep then, rabbit hole, that is. It's yeah, deep the deep yes. rabbit hole. <laughs> and there's so many switch colors, and they all feel different. And then mm -hmm. sometimes it depends on your mood. If you're in a clicky mood, maybe you want blue switches. If you're not in a loud mood, maybe you want like red or brown. Um, so I'm a big fan of mechanical keyboards. So these have the mechanical switches on them. So just click. Very clicky. Very clicky, very clicky. Yes. And it lights up. And it lights up. <laughs> um, I'm typing in my terminal. Um, <laughs> so these have blue cherry switches in them. Um, but as we were moving into the office, I was like, I'm going to need quieter switches. So um, I bought a bunch of brown switches, which are a bit quieter, but still have that tactile feel. But then I unscrewed this whole thing and learned that this is a solder soldering keyboards. So some keyboards have hot swap keyboards that let you hot swap the switches out and they yeah. just pop out. These are soldered in, so then I needed to get a soldering iron and then as you can see they're still blue. So I haven't gotten around to <laughs> um, unsoldering these switches out of here um, and putting the brown ones in, but I will eventually. It's a lot of work to do, but it'd be a nice thing to do for everyone else in the office who's done to put with the, right. with the click. Yeah. Cool. And the mouse as well, it's cool. Nice color. Kind of matches, yeah. matches my shirt. Yeah, my matches whole thing is yeah. is a light pink. And then I actually, I replaced these keycaps. They used to be this color pink right. in the typewriter shape, so then they matched. But then I wanted, you know, a clean white look, so I just bought different keycaps, and you could just swap your keycaps out as you like. Kind of like how you swap out parts on your computer, you could swap out parts on your keyboard as well. So then I got some white typewriter keys just to switch it up a bit. But the pink mouse matched the original pink keycaps when I bought nice, this. Nice, nice. Having the whole thing match is just, it's, <laughs> it's just awesome. Yeah. It just looks, the whole, it just looks lovely. Thank That's you. That's really, really cool. So super into keyboards. But then I actually never, like I haven't owned a machine since college. I have my college laptop and that was it. And then I was just using the work computer. So just something a lot of actually, a lot of tech people do this. And mm. I know it's kind of bizarre you think, we're in tech, we must own 100 computers. Right. A lot of us just, be, we're not working people all day anyway. Right. What are we going to do at home? Exactly. We're going to hack on open source projects, which are on our work computer. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and I already had like my work computer set up with, mm. you know, Visual Studio and everything. So if I was doing anything outside of work hours, it's just on there anyway. Yeah. So I, I never had a machine outside of college. So I was like, I think now's, now's the, the time. time. Yeah. Um, and then that's kind of why I wanted to get into building my own. And I know that you can upgrade pieces separately. So it's kind of like that analogy of you have a ship and you replace a piece of wood. And then at what point is it the same ship or mm -hmm. a new ship? The same thing works with computers. You could build your machine and then swap out the CPU or the graphics card. And then at some point, you're just evolving the same machine, but it's a new machine at the same time. Yeah. So in Britain, we have this analogy. It's called Trigger's Broom. as a TV show. Uh, okay. had a character called Trigger. And he would constantly replace the handle of his broom or the head of the broom. Okay. Across, it's always the same broom. Right. But, but once you place the, the, the handle once and the, the head of it once, it's actually a new broom, but in his mind, same broom. Exactly. Same thing here. This is the trigger's broom. You can upgrade all the pieces over time. Yeah. And get a new computer 
it may it'll be the same computer to you, still be still be Ada. Right. But it'll just have slowly all the parts placed. Yeah. That's really, really cool. This is great. Thank you so much for, for bringing this to to share with us. Really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. As cool as this project is, what's even cooler is you can recreate this at home. Check out the link below for everything you need.